Okay, so this is an article that was sent to me on Twitter. It says, we may never know. I'm going to read this, and then we're going to get into some of these other videos here for tonight. Thank you all for hanging out. I appreciate it. And if you haven't yet, please hit the like. Uh, it's the free way to help out. Also, leave a comment on the video, too. That help. All right, it says, uh, on Thursday... A jury in Kootenai County sent shockwaves through the Silver Valley and surrounding areas when they handed down a not guilty verdict in the first degree unaliving trial of Heather Crawford. Crawford was accused of unaliving 22 month old, the daughter of her former boyfriend, in August of 2014. The trial was moved from Shoshone County to Kootenai, Kootenai County. After I can never get those right. After officials determined that they would not be able to field an impartial jury. The trial was moved from Shoshone County to Kootenai County after officials determined they would not be able to get be able to field an impartial jury. The trial began on January 11th, and after 16 days of being presented with evidence, testimony, and cross-examinations, the case was handed to the jury on Wednesday, February 1st. The verdict was presented to the court at 3.45 p.m. the next afternoon. The reaction from the public has been one of utter shock and surprise as many felt as though the case was an open and closed affair but unfortunately for the prosecution it was far from such okay I'm kind of seeing why i'm getting this article sent to me Shoshone County prosecuting attorney Keisha Oxendine believes that despite the not guilty verdict the state put forth a strong enough case, but the jurors never got their smoking gun. Oh, okay. Interesting. I felt as though the state put forth a strong case for conviction, Oxidine said. <clears throat> the state provided evidence of the cod through numerous experts and provided evidence on the defendant's motive intent and opportunity to commit this crime cases like these are often difficult decisions for juries as our society portrays the courtroom as always having the rhetorical smoking gun in an unalive case that wasn't the case here and as many experts testified, that isn't the case in many of these cases. Former Shoshone County Sheriff Mitch Alexander, who was the sheriff at the time of the alleged crime, had believed the case was going to be difficult to try based on the lack of vital evidence. But Oxidine though, thought that she had strong enough evidence to get the conviction. I chose to charge this case and take it forward because the case and evidence was strong, Oxidine stated. I was confident the right person had been charged in this crime, and I am still confident the right person was charged for this crime. A prosecutor does not back down from a case because it is difficult. Most of these cases are difficult. But that does not mean that you do not pursue it. Justice demands that a prosecutor seek justice no matter how difficult the case is. The case has always been about justice and pursuing the case no matter how difficult was done in pursuit of justice. Last week, the prosecution was handed a huge blow to their case when one of their key witnesses... Crawford's ex-husbands went very bad for the prosecution. The state did not anticipate calling John Crawford as a witness in this case, and it was anticipated he would testify about alleged statements the defendant made to him before the arrest in the case. 
Oxidine said, however, circumstances beyond the state's control resulted in the inability to call call him as a witness due to credibility issues that included a DUI arrest in Kooten County on the day of his anticipated testimony. Whoa. What? Brady Giglio, Idaho 4. Credibility of testimony. The, the, the prosecution thinks they have a a case to convict I see why this article was sent to me shout out to you I'm going to go back to my Twitter and find out who sent it and and shout out to you thank you for sending this to me uh, Uh, Crawford Hall and was okay. Streamyard, I'm not sure what happened to Streamyard there. Streamyard's having issues now. That's cool. No shit, Katrina. Is my StreamYard bugging? Because it's showing me that it's bugging, but it's been acting weird since I... Paid for the... F I'll tell you what... Give me one second. I'm just going on mode. hot spot real quick all right <clears throat> is it good now jeez all right <clears throat> yeah let me know uh katrina do me a favor send me a screenshot would you Send me a screenshot. Um, sorry about that. Shit's bugging out over here. All right. I should have the connection thing fixed there. I need to get some kind of satellite internet or something. All right. What was I even saying? Shit. All right. Then, as Oxidine stated, Mr. Crawford then was charged with driving under the influence, driving without privileges, having an open container of alcohol in the vehicle, and leaving the scene of an accident, all of which occurred immediately following his departure from the Kootenai County Courthouse. What? Holy shit, bro. Holy shit, bro. You drove to the courthouse when you weren't supposed to be driving in the first place? You don't think they're going to freaking notice? What are you doing? The statement that Mr. Crawford was going to testify about was an alleged confession that on the night of Ezra's unaliving, Heather had caught Ezra attempting to... One of her other children, and she proceeded to sit on her.
until she passed out. The evidence that was presented at this trial <clears throat> in this matter and the witness testimony that was presented formed that opinion that they still had enough evidence to convict. Despite Oxidine's strong beliefs on the case, Heather Crawford's defense attorney and Taylor still raised several very serious questions that went unfounded. And Taylor. Interesting. When asked if Taylor was surprised by Oxendine's choice to only pursue Crawford as a suspect, Taylor did not hold back. I was surprised the investigation and attendant prosecution was directly solely at Heather, especially given all of the alternatives Taylor replied. I am surprised there was no investigation of the victim's father or persons who may have retaliated against him for his role in the Dobson Pass unalivings. What? Though given the police investigator's quick decision to protect him and focus their efforts elsewhere, I probably should not be. Wilson was convicted on two counts of accessory to first degree unaliving in 2009 as, as a result of the Dobson Pass unalivings in 2008. He was sentenced to the five-year maximum penalty with two years fixed and other three inter, interdeminate. Taylor also made mention of two other people being in the house that night. The first, a female who was there at the time that the first responders arrived following the 911 call. The second man who was in the home earlier that night but was unknown to other children in the house? What? What? I still cannot believe there was no real investigation into the identity of the adult female in the house described by the two first responders. The calm woman that was not Heather. Likewise, that no one tried to determine who the guy the other children saw in the house that night was and why he was never looked for, Taylor said. The police put the focus on Heather almost immediately. I wasn't am shocked at the way the investigation focused only on her. <clears throat> it is incredibly vexing that the investigation ignored many leads that did not fit in their theory, focusing on Heather to the exclusion of all else. It was a thinly veiled attempt by the police investigators to, in their words, quote, break her and presumably to attempt to obtain a conviction by way of character assassination these thoughts were cemented by taylor's firm belief that the investigators were never completed and was surprised at first that a case she perceived as being poorly investigated was ever taken to trial but her surprise went away when she started to believe that the real reason for the lack of investigation was because the prosecution had already made up their minds on who was guilty this is not a case that was investigated fully or completely. No person should ever go through what Heather went through these last two years on such a poor and lacking investigation, Taylor said. Once I saw what was and was not part of the official investigation and began my work, I quickly learned that correcting lacking information... <clears throat> and correcting misinformation did not matter to the police investigators they had very <clears throat> excuse me they had very early on made up their mind to protect Hiram and prosecute Heather it also seemed that they were putting a lot of pressure on the prosecutor to try the case and get a conviction that would validate their rush to judgment against Heather Hiram Wilson does not believe he was protected in any way and that those thoughts were just part of a smokescreen 
put up by Taylor to achieve the reasonable doubt that they wanted? No, those are pretty valid freaking questions. And now I know why I was sent this article because, man, there's a lot of a lot of similarities. And look who is the defense attorney, y'all. And Taylor. The whole concept that I was being protected by my father, former Pinehurst Police Chief Rocky Wilson, was there from the beginning, Wilson said. The only consistent part of anyone's story in this is that I was sleeping. The timeline of events show that Crawford was on her phone all night. The last text leaving at 11.08 p.m. and exactly one hour later, the 911 call was made. So that leaves one hour accounted for by her, but the whole time she has stated that I was asleep. Wilson's point was that despite the claims that he somehow was involved, Crawford's story kept changing except for one thing, Wilson being asleep. The stories were stories where she said that she dozed off but woke up to a breeze, or that she woke up because she heard one of her children make a sound, Wilson said. The whole time, though, I was always asleep because I was Inconsistencies like these were part of why Wilson began to suspect that Crawford wasn't being truthful in what she was saying. But then Crawford began to make statements that really began to make him suspect that she herself was responsible. She kept saying that they're only going to think that I did it and we need to get an attorney. And I was of the idea that if you didn't do anything wrong, then you don't need an attorney, Wilson remarked. Then a few days later, she made the comment, on a bright note, we don't have to ever see her again, referring to Wilson's ex-wife, Naomi. That was when I broke it off with her, when she didn't want to be cooperative with the police, didn't want to release her phone, tried to erase everything from her phone, and began making comments like that. Wilson is still upset with the concept of Crawford's character being constantly protected in the courtroom, but as a witness, they were able to drag him through the mud, as Wilson's mother, Jennifer, put it. None of her prior history of child abuse was ever brought up. Her substance abuse, Wilson exclaimed, we couldn't say a thing about her character. My character, a past, was brought up and used against me, but hers wasn't allowed. I wasn't the one on trial for the crime. It wasn't fair. Alleged things like prior run-ins with law enforcement and child protective services were also inadmissible in court, according to Wilson, but he doesn't know or understand why. Why not? If it's involving a child, why wouldn't? Prior run-ins especially with Ellie or Child Protective Services, be admissible. That's interesting. There was a lot of evidence that wasn't used, Wilson said. There was evidence they had that I didn't even know about until the trial. Despite all the evidence that wasn't used, John Crawford's missed testimony and even false allegations that he was protected by relatives... The Wilson family believed that there was strong enough evidence prevent, presented to convict Crawford. Wilson was even able to shoot down the incorrect notion that Detective Charlie Greer, who was involved in both Wilson's 2009 case and this one, had been reported as Wilson's godfather. I never had met Charlie Greer until recently, Wilson said. He isn't my godfather. There is no relationship there. As the dust continues to settle, Wilson holds no ill will toward Oxidine or the prosecution team that failed to secure a guilty conviction. I think Keisha did everything she could and that her entire focus was getting justice for my daughter, Wilson said. She did everything she could. She worked until midnight some nights. I am thankful for the hard work she put in for my family. Unfortunately for the Wilson family, this is as far as the case can and will be pursued. Crawford cannot be tried again for the same crime <clears throat> under the double jeopardy rule, and the state doesn't have the right to appeal the decision to a higher court. Taylor did, however, exp 
express remorse for the passing of Ezra. Unfortunately, I believe we will never know what happened to Ezra. Taylor said, Oxendine echoed the sentiment that no one will ever know, but not in the same manner that Taylor did. Oxendine believes that a unalive or got away and that she will never know why the jury decided there wasn't enough evidence to convict Heather Lynn Crawford of the crime. The state does not intend to pursue another suspect because we are confident that the person that was charged is the person responsible for the crime. Oxidine says there is no evidence to suggest otherwise. The fact that a jury reaches a verdict of not guilty in a case simply means that the jury did not feel the evidence presented showed proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Juries can reach a not guilty verdict for a variety of reasons because the jury deliberations are strictly confidential. We may never know the reason behind why they reach the outcome. Are you freaking serious? I can't believe I'm seeing what I'm seeing here. How am I seeing this? I don't understand it. You're going to tell me that somebody... You're going to tell me that somebody they somebody doesn't get convicted the state does not intend to pursue another suspect Is that what they're going to do with this one if BK gets off we're not going to pursue another suspect because we feel that Wow, shout out to whoever sent me this article. Uh, we may never know. From 2017, Kootenai County and Taylor. Wow. That's crazy, yo. I see why somebody sent me. I see why somebody sent that to me. Uh, let me go to Twitter real quick. So this person right here followed me on Twitter right here and reached out to me and sent me this article that we just read. Okay. Whoever this storm is, thank you. I appreciate it. Look at this question that they have right here. Thank you. I appreciate it, Kib Kitty. Look at this question. Did you know that the Moscow... Did you know that Moscow has medical amnesty that protects anyone who ODs or repo reports an OD from being prosecuted if they call emergency personnel? So d is that why? Is that why we all have been wondering why this whole time that somebody was called in? as an unconscious person because that's what's going to be released to protect stormos whoever you are thank you for the follow on twitter thank you for shooting me this article thank you for wow thank you whoever you are not sure storm underscore oz 2023 
great article thank you for the tag and damn this is a great question is this why we've all wondered this whole time why the 911 call was called for an unconscious Wow is right. Shout out Stormos. Thank you so much. Don't even know who you are. They just take me 10 hours ago in this video. Check this out. And we checked it out. And damn, I'm making a highlight out of that after the show, too. Very interesting. Very interesting. Shout out Stormos. Let me go to the page so you know what the page looks like. And here is the link. And definitely go shoot them a follow. Shout out Stormos. Stormos E.